Hello everyone, thanks for stopping by. My name is Jim Falk and I'm with trailgear.org. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the Bushwhacker wood gas stove. Uh, some tips and tricks for uh, using the stove and all its components. Uh, the way I carry my stove is I have a four cup aluminum mug, um, a nylon bag where the stove nests inside the nylon bag and then the whole nylon bag fits inside the, uh, the mug. Perfect little setup for storage. Next I'm going to take this all apart and show you all the component parts. Alright, I've taken the uh, stove out of the nylon bag. This is a simple 4x9 nylon bag. Uh, I found this at an Army Navy surplus store. In the not too distant future, I'm going to be manufacturing and selling these bags. I'm also going to be selling a bag that's a little bit bigger that will totally cover the uh, cooking pot also. So you can have the stove and the nylon bag in the cooking pot and then a separate bag to put the um, four cup aluminum mug or cooking pot into the bag and that way you can store it safely in your gear and uh, keep all your gear clean. The stove is um, a two piece stove. I store the windscreen around the side. And I use just a rubber band to secure it. The windscreen, fold it in half so that when you unfold it, it becomes a nice windscreen. I'll give you some more details about this in a second. In the stove, you can store your um, accessories inside the stove. Stove is a two-piece stove. Inside I have my fuel bottle uh, for uh, backup alcohol stove, one of my cat alcohol stoves, the pot stand, the support rods for using the alcohol stove, and I'll show you that later, and also the bottom fire grate which goes into the bottom of the uh, burning chamber. The Bushwhacker is a two-piece stove, an outer cam with an inner cam, a fire grate that sits in the bottom of the burning chamber, cooking pot stand, and your cooking pot. Um, the fire grate is used to go in the bottom of the uh, burning chamber, it has four legs which give elevation so that what's in the bottom allows for better airflow into the stove. Um, you do not have to use the fire grate. If you want more wood in the stove for longer burning times, you can remove this and load the stove directly with uh, wood all the way to the bottom. Talk about loading the stove. You want to load the stove with small pieces of uh, fast to medium burning woods. Stay away from the hardwoods like uh, oak and uh, walnut. Uh, they don't gasify fast enough, so you need faster to medium uh, burning woods. Um, you want to load the stove with the pieces with a diameter uh, the size or smaller than your pinky or ring finger and to be short enough so that they can lay flat into the stove. Um, actually the smaller the length the, the better. And you want to lay the pieces of wood flat in the stove and build each layer interlaced and staggered like a log cabin. This will allow airflow to go into the stove and up through the stove more efficiently. Do not stack your wood vertically. When you fill the stove with wood, fill it to under these air intake holes. Don't fill it all the way to the top because you have to build a second layer on top to start your fire and that's explained in videos one and two. So fill it to underneath these air intake holes. Another thing, after you get used to using the stove, you don't have to fill it all the way up with wood to cook. If you only want to boil two cups of water and your climate conditions are satisfactory, you can get away with filling this thing only halfway with wood to boil two cups of water. After you experiment uh, with this thing for a while, you get the hang of it. So you can determine how much wood you need after you've used it for a while. Basically, drop in your fire grate with the legs down. 
creates a gap in the bottom of the stove. Fill your stove with wood to underneath the air intake holes. Put the two cans together and line up the seams in both cans when you drop the outer can over so that the air intake holes on the bottom are fully open. When you first start the stove, you want the air intake holes uh, fully open. By lining the seams up between the two cans, this will orientate the holes properly. Uh, you light your fire after the fire gets going, and that's explained in videos one and two. Drop on your pot stand, and then drop on your cooking pot. Um, this is a load once, light, and walk away stove. You do not add additional wood to this stove after it gets going. You load it, light it, and it burns from the top down slowly. Do not add additional wood to it. It will probably upset the gasification process and you won't have a good fire. So remember, it's a load once, light, and walk away stove. Talk real quick about the uh, cooking pot. What I do is you should always use a lid on your cooking pot. For one, it'll keep the smoke and fumes from getting into your, uh, your food that you're cooking, which is um, considered a carcinogen cancer-causing agent. So you want to keep your smoke and fume away from your food. Uh, what I do is I don't have an example right here, but I take a uh, disposable pizza tin that you can get at the grocery store, and I swarm it so it sits just inside the rim. So when you push it down, it creates a seal. That way the flames and the fire come up past it and there's no lip for uh, the fumes to get drawn into the stove. So form the, uh, the lid from a pizza tin so that it sits just inside the rim. Also, if you do it right, you can then push it all the way to the bottom of the stove for storage. Now I'm going to uh, talk about the second configuration for using this stove. Um, when you use the two can setup, uh, you can probably get total cook times of about oh, 15 to 20 minutes. But there's a way of using this to uh, extend the cooking times. I mean, I've been able to, to boil six cups of, of uh, water in a percolator coffee pot plus cook a couple eggs on one load of fuel. But the way you do that is you use only the outside can and your windscreen together to make a two-walled wood gas stove. Wood gas stoves need a two-wall design in order for the gasification process to work. And what I do is I take my windscreen and I, I wrap it around the stove to get a nice form out of it. So you get a nice setup. Um, if you're in wet or damp climates, you can take the lid, lay it on, on the ground, and then put your, your uh, stove over the top. This will give you a vapor barrier and also minimize ground score, uh, scoring um, when you uh, start the stove. Uh, or if the ground is dry and you don't have to worry about uh, dampness getting sucked into the stove, you can just put this right down directly on the, on the dirt. Make sure you're not on peat or any type of moss that can start a ground fire underground. I usually recommend using the lid. Lay it down, put the lid bottom side up. Take the stove put it over the top, fill your stove with wood as described earlier, start your fire, and then wrap your windscreen completely around. Don't, I see a lot of people leaving the windscreen open like this. Uh, that's not efficient. You want to create a sealed two-walled environment with the, with the second windscreen, so wrap it completely around so that there's a about a half inch gap between the uh, wall of the stove and the windscreen. And then drop on your pot stand and your cooking pot. And this will give you a long burn time. Uh, I've had successful burns of uh, up to 40 minutes, 45 minutes using this configuration. This is really good if the weather is really bad or if you want to cook a few items. You want to boil some water and you want to cook eggs. Use this configuration, it'll, it'll, it'll give you a longer burn time. And the reason is because you have a larger volume that you can put more wood in using only the outside can. So try this configuration, it works really well.